governor. Her name was Hilda Bino, later um, more commonly known as Dame Hilda Bino. So a little bit about Hilda Bino. So Hilda Bino uh, was born in 1921. She uh, was originally from Croshu in St. Andrews. Uh, she migrated to Trinidad where she would have taught at the St. Joseph's Convent in Trinidad for several years. She went on to study medicine and became one of Grenada's first female medical practitioners or doctors, having studied medicine in the UK. While in Trinidad, she married a Trinidadian by the name of Peter Bino, and they will later have two sons, Roland and Michael Bino. Uh, she walked across the region, including in Trinidad and Guyana and Grenada, practicing medicine as a doctor. And in 1968, under, of course, at the time it was um, Sir Eric Matthew Gary, who was in charge of Grenada as the... Um, it wasn't Prime Minister because we were not yet independent, but Premier. Um, in 1968, Sir Eric Matthew Gary ap appointed uh, um, Dame Hilda Bino as Governor of the Associated State of Grenada. So before independence, Grenada was under Associated Statehood. Associated Statehood is... Um, basically you you're not in control of all of your affairs um you have most control of like political economic and social affairs but you don't have um control over defense and foreign policy so those were the two areas that grenada under associated statehood did not have control that was still retained by the british crown or monarch so Dame Hilda Bino became the first governor of Grenada as an associated state. She was female uh, and she served in that position as governor of Grenada until Grenada achieved independence in 1974. In 1969, the official title of Dame which is a title that has to be given by the British monarch, which would have been Queen Elizabeth II at the time. Um, Hilda Bino was appointed dame and held that title until um, for the rest of her life. It's a title granted for life, actually. So once you get that title of dame, you're granted that title for life. So Dame Hilda Bino, first female governor of Grenada. The next woman we want to talk about briefly here is Cynthia Gary. So Cynthia Gary um, became the first female member of parliament. So a little bit about Cynthia Gary and who she was. So Cynthia Gary uh, was born in 1923. She was originally from the parish of St. David. Um, Central St. David, to be exact. Um, she was the wife of the first Prime Minister of Grenada, Sir Eric Matthew Gary. So Eric and Cynthia married in around 1944-1945. Uh, they went on to have two daughters, Marcel and Jennifer Gary. So as wife of Sir Eric Matthew Gary, um, together they were both in politics. So both husband and wife were in politics. Um, Eric Matthew Gary would go on to lead the um, GLP party and eventually become the political leader and also uh, the prime minister of Grenada where he would have served from 1974 right up to the March 13th events of 1979. And Cynthia Gary, she served in the House of Representatives as MP, having won her seat first in 1961 um, when she ran for the uh, 
seat that would have been the constituency of St. David. So she represented the, the constituency of St. David from 1961 right up to 1979 with the overthrow of the Gary government on March 13th. Um, Cynthia Gary was the first female um, to be elected to sit in the House of Representatives when she was elected in 1961 as part of Gary's government um, from 1974 to 1979. Uh, she held the position of, of the Ministries of Education and Culture. So that is Cynthia Gary. Moving on, so we have another remarkable woman, Gertrude Protein, and she's not as, as well known um, in, in terms of um, much has not been shared about who she was and her life, etc. There is a book though on her, I'll speak to that a little bit later, but Gertrude Protein was born in 1914 in St. Vincent. Um, so she was not a Grenadian by birth, but Grenadian claim, right? Sometimes we claim um, persons who, who are not born in Grenada, but um, have uh, contributed or have ties to Grenada as our own. So Gertrude would be an example of a female who was not born in Grenada, um, but uh, we claim her as our own. So she was originally from St. Vincent and as a young girl moved to Grenada where she made her, her contribution essentially. So uh, Gertrude should have taught at the Anakin High School in Grenada for several years before moving on to serve as the first woman to serve on the Legislative Council of Grenada. The Legislative Council of Grenada was a body that was established, again, it's another pre-independence part of the legislative arm of government. So we have the Associated State, but we also have this Legislative Council that also that advised on legislative affairs and was given advice to the Gary government at the time. So, Gertrude Protein was the first woman to serve on the Legislative Council of Grenada. Most importantly, Gertrude is remembered as being the first lady of tourism. She co-founded what is today the Grenada Hotel Association and traveled throughout the region and internationally um, on many tourism missions promoting Grenada. So she was the first lady of tourism. That's what history would, would assign her contribution to be. Um, in a couple of years ago, um, a book has been written. If you are interested in the book, you can purchase it at uh, Belmont Estate in St. Patrick's. The book is called Gertrude Protein, Glimpses into the Life of a Great Grenadian. And it's a book written by the owner of Belmont Estate, Shadel Naya Compton. Again, the copies are sold on location at Belmont Estate. So you can get your copy if you are interested in learning more about the contributions of Gertrude Protein, who was the first woman to serve on the Legislative Council of Grenada. Margaret Nichols. So Margaret Nichols, uh, the first woman president of the Senate. So Margaret Nichols is, was the first uh, woman president of the Senate. From since then to now, there have been several women who have served as president of the Senate, um, including um, Leslie Ann Sion served for a period of time. She's a, a lawyer. She served for a period of time as president of the, of the Senate. Um, 
So there are several women who have served since the time of Margaret Nichols, but Margaret Nichols is recorded in history as being the first. Uh, she served during the period of 1990 to 1995 under the, the government of uh, Sir Nicholas Braffitt, who was the prime minister at the time, and the ruling party would have been the uh, NDC administration. So Margaret Nichols. Gloria Payne Banfield, still alive today and very active in service in many ways. Uh, Gloria Payne Banfield was the, the uh, she became one of, not the first first, but one of uh, the, f the first female leaders of a political party. So she, um, in 2003, was elected the leader of the GLP party. The GLP party was the party originally formed by Sir Eric Matthew Gary, who became the first prime minister. And uh, um, in 2003, the party was looking for new leadership. They had lost election several times since since then in the 1990s they were not as popular as they used to be as in the 60s and the 70s so um gloria Payne banfield became the political leader of the GLP for a period of time she is no longer the, the political leader of that party but she would have served in the capacity as uh, as leader for several years um Gloria Payne Banfield is most also noted as being a cabinet secretary under the Eric Matthew Gary government, as well as she held the post of permanent secretary under the Ministry of Planning under the People's Revolutionary Government under the Grenada Revolution. So we'll take a quick break here and come back and continue of course with looking at women some some first women in grenada history so let's take a quick break and be right back of course if you're watching the program you've just tuned in ensure to share the live on your facebook page and help us to reach our broader audience we are back uh, and we continue with our topic today one of our topics looking at some female first in terms of Grenada's history so let's uh, move on now to Joan Purcell so Joan Purcell as history records it is the first official female to have led a political party on the books as I mentioned, uh, Gloria Payne Banfield is also an, ex an example of a, a female first in terms of leading a political party, but on the official books in terms of time and when the sequence took place, John Purcell, history would record as being the first female to lead a political party, and that political party would have is, is the um, NDC. So in 
um, Joan Purcell became the first female to lead a political party, that party being the NDC. That was after um, the 99 elections where uh, the NNP administration would have won all seats, 15 nil, and uh, the Right Honorable Dr. Kit Mitchell retained um, power for a second term. Um, before Joan Purcell, George Brisson would have served as Prime Minister in 1994 to 1995 and would have retained the leader of the political party, NDC. Um, but around 1999, um, Joan Purcell emerged as the, the leader of the, the political party, the NDC. Um, Joan Purcell is known as having won the Kariku seat. She served as MP for Kariku in the first NDC administration from 1990 to 1995. Our current Governor General, um, Dame Cecile Lagrenat, is also a first. She is the first female Governor General of Grenada. She would have been appointed the Governor General of Grenada in 2013 by the NNP administration upon their return to um, governance in the 2013 elections. Um, a little bit about Cecile La Grenade. She's a businesswoman. She owns the La Grenade Industries, which specializes in the production of jams and jellies, whether it's nutmeg or guava, pepper, jams and jellies. Uh, she's trained as a food scientist, having been trained in the United States. She was a doctorate, to be exact, in the area of food science. She's originally from Lavery St. George's, um, attended the St. Louis Girls RC and also uh, St. Joseph's Convent St. George's. She comes from a family of um, that have had some contributions in terms of political governance in Grenada's history, right? So there are examples within her immediate family, her sisters, that would have played a role in Grenada's politics. So our current Governor General is also a first um, in terms of being the first female Governor General of Grenada. So in terms of all the first, we have had our first, other first, uh, I don't have pictures of them, but we have Winifred Strong. She was the first um, leader of the opposition to be a female, and that was back many, many moons ago. So in terms of first, I think the only thing we're still waiting on is to have a first female prime minister. So maybe in many, many years to come, right, we may have a first female prime minister and um, have that on our history books. Um, other islands have surpassed us in terms of reaching that, that, that feat already. Um, Barbados has had this, the current Mia Motley, um, Trinidad has had Kamala, right? Jamaica has had, um, that's when I can't remember her name, but she was the Portia Simpson, right? Portia Simpson was the first female prime minister of Jamaica, right? So, um, Grenada in future, maybe we'll have one. We continue in terms of looking at women. So again, Phyllis Code was not a Grenadian. Uh, she's Jamaican by birth, but history has us being the first. Um, well, she was the first in terms of she was the president of the National Women's Organization under the PRG, which was a massive movement um, leading thousands and thousands of women and making many contributions today in terms of Grenada society. So some of the achievements of the National Women's Organization under the PRG included the setting up of daycare centers. So daycare centers where women who are working could leave their babies during the day and go to work. That was started under the National Women's Organization. 
there was also lots of training of women in skilled and trade areas was another achievement of the national women's organization under the prg and there are several women who played a critical role in that organization phyllis code was the president but we also have other women such as um rita joseph we have um Vary Conward is also another woman who would have played a major part of the National Women's Organization along with uh, Rita Joseph. So these are just some examples of Grenadian women contributing to that whole movement to um, educate, really educate and help to advance the progress of women was really the aim and goal of the National Women's Organization under the prg phyllis code would have been in prison she was imprisoned as one of the 17 for the october 19th um 1983 events which led to the the death of of maurice bishop who was assassinated on for judge so she was imprisoned for many years and then released in in 2000 due to medical reasons and died in 2020 in jamaica so phyllis code not grenadian by blood but um definitely having a role in terms of grenada's history just a little plug before we, we take our break and move into the another segment as we continue to look at some women in grenada being forced um if you're following our page or you have not yet followed our Facebook page, hit the follow button and follow our page. If you're liking our content, of course, hit like, like Island Learning Grenada. Of course, you can like Pineapple Marketing and Communication if you haven't liked it, if you're viewing the program there too as well. But also to like Island Learning Grenada's Facebook page or follow our Facebook page, Island Learning Grenada. So let's look at some other women. So we're moving out of the political space and looking at some other contributions of women in Grenada's, when we look at history, heritage, culture, other aspects of Grenada's life. So uh, Henrietta Millicent Douglas. So Henrietta Millicent Douglas was the first female recorded to be um have a leading role in the creative and pop pop i got tongue twisted there in the creative and performing arts in grenada so there's a lot of excitement and anticipation with the starting up of the creative economy but the start of the creative economy dates back many many moons to the days of the 1930s and 40s and 50s with the work of henrietta millicent douglas so she studied music she studied music in the united states at the royal academy of music and earned her education in music and performing arts uh, she returned to grenada she was her family is originally from st andrews and uh, henrietta douglas so she returned to grenada upon studying music and um, became the owner of two theaters in Grenada. So performing arts theater, so the Gaiety Theater, which was located on the old Esplanade, what is today the Esplanade Mall area, and that whole Esplanade area on Melville Street. Well, before it was developed like that, there was just an old Esplanade area, right? So the there was a performing arts theater, um the gate theater and they put on many theater shows um for grenadians and they also traveled internationally right they traveled internationally and performed in the united states um several of their plays um henrietta douglas also owned another performing theater in granville called the eastern theater so she owned two theaters performing theater arts in grenada so henrietta millicent douglas 
the first female to be credited with contribution towards the creative and performing arts in Grenada. We have uh, Monica Joseph, who is still alive today. So, um, Judge Moni Monica Joseph, she's now retired. She became the first female judge in Grenada in 1982. Um, so, since then, there are many um, more female judges who are Grenadians, but Monica Joseph is the first female would have become the first female judge in Grenada. So she served uh, as her judge for many months and retired um, a few years back and went on to be uh, to lead the first integrity commission. So when the integrity commission was started in 2015, um, Monica Joseph, Judge Monica Joseph was the, the first head of the Integrity Commission. Uh, currently, it is um, Lady um, Anna de Trotman Joseph, who is the head of the Integrity Commission. But the work of the commission started with um, Judge Monica Joseph. So this lady... Um, more known in the Grenadian diaspora, especially the, the Grenadians living in Canada, and especially if you're in the GTA or the Greater Toronto area. But Jean Augustine, Jean Augustine is a Grenadian, um, and she broke lots of uh, historical records in terms of both in Grenada, but mostly in Canada, of becoming the first black. Uh, African descent female to be elected as a Canadian to the Canada's House of Commons, which is the House of Parliament, um, as a member of Parliament for the Greater Toronto Area. So she was elected in 1993 and served for uh, right up until 2006. So she had a, a pretty long stint as a member of parliament for the greater Toronto area and many, many uh, different books. A lot of social schools programs are named after Jean Augustine. There's also a documentary on Jean Augustine, her life and contribution. And many um, articles have been written about Jean Augustine. But she was... Grenadian by birth, of course, migrated to Canada and served as member of parliament, breaking uh, records in history in Canada. Of course, we acknowledge her as a Grenadian too as well, being the first female of Grenadian uh, descent or heritage to hold political office overseas. So that's a huge, huge accomplishment um, to break that barrier um, in, in terms of overseas, right? So Jean Augustine. And then, of course, we have to wrap up this uh, segment before we take a break. Jennifer Hosten. So Jennifer Hosten won the Miss World title, and it was a shock at the time to many people that if uh, a place that most people have never heard about Grenada at the time back in 1970, most people did not hear about Grenada. Grenada became actually um, more well known after 1983 and the Grenada Revolution would have increased the, uh, the prominence of Grenada. Some may argue good or bad, um, but before then, Grenada was not well known. But in 1970, Jennifer Hosten, um, originally from St. George's, Grenada, um, went up for the Miss World title and won, right? And she broke, uh, of course, in terms of history, that was a big accomplishment to have a small island Grenada winning Miss World title. It was during a period of time. And it's a lot of uh, racial issues in, going on in the with, in South Africa and the apartheid situation there, etc. So in 1970, Jennifer Hostin. So there is a movie um, that tells the story of Jennifer Hostin um, that you can check out. Um, but Jennifer Hostin, uh, uh, 
notably the uh, first female in terms of winning an international queen title that being miss world in 1970. so let's take a quick quick break and we'll be right back with more looking at more women and female first So we are back uh of course if you're tuning into our program and sure that you're following us on island learning grenada facebook page uh if you're liking our content you can also like us our facebook page island learning grenada if you are watching via our uh, youtube channel island learning grenada ensure that you stay are uh, you subscribed to our channel you hit the subscribe button on uh youtube and that uh you are a subscriber and then you'll get notified every time that we go live so let's continue with looking at uh some female first we're gonna turn on to now culture and some first in terms of culture as we wrap up this segment here and looking at uh some first female in terms of as different aspects of grenada's uh life society politics governance etc there are many many examples we're just giving some examples there are many more examples and in time we'll continue to grow our content here in terms of female first and and what we share but let's move on now to culture and look at some female first in terms of culture so we have cynthia august better known as lady cinti uh, originally, of course, from the parish of St. Patrick's, the historical parish of St. Patrick's. In 1983, Lady Sinti won the Calypso Mona crown and became the first female Calypso monarch of Grenada. Um, some other women would become uh, winners later on in, in in terms of the the calypso monarch we would have um kitura george several years ago we had um pamela courtney we also had akima paul so these are just some examples of other females that would have won the calypso monarch title but lady Sinti was the first female calypso monarch in 1983 so she won the title in the year at the that was the year october would have been the criminal revolution so the august of that year um she won the crown her two compositions was the future of the revolution and trip down hell so those were the two compositions that won her the calypso monarch in 1983 um lady saint is the mother of uh former soca monarch champions um lily spack and electrify who are soca artists in grenada and i guess they're continuing the they're not in calypso as yet but uh in, in terms of soca in costume and mass band leadership helen marie of helen marie and associates so helen marie has had over 20 years in the costume um and mass band leadership so costume design and mass band having a mass band on the road each carnival season um helen marie is a female mass band leader 
and the longest service serving female mass band leader to date in costume and mass bands in grenada her band helen marian associates typically each year they have a children's band as well as an adult band and they have claimed band of the year title on several occasions and have won kitty's um carnival in terms of the kiddies band section on many many occasions as well as uh on the road tuesday carnival tuesday the parade of the bands winning a band of the year title so helen mary of helen mary and associates so look forward to them on the road um this year 2023 um spice mask the hype is on the excitement is on the launch is going to be in uh, april um so in about one month's time we're going to have the launch of spice mass the theme is out the evolution of spice mass so we're excited to see the evolution of all the things that's going to be taking place with spice mass um there was recently on friday the announcement of the new ceo so we want to say congrats to mr cecil noel a long time cultural practitioner especially in terms of the steel band and his contribution to the common cheros um steel band orchestra in st paul's and other aspects of, of carnival um i don't know all but i know definitely in terms of the common cheros steel band he has had a key role there in terms of their musical arrangement and the whole leadership of the band so congrats to mr cecil noel on being ceo and we're excited and hyped up for spice mass 2023 if you are in the diaspora and you haven't got your tickets as yet um see about getting your tickets to come down and experience spice mass 2023 again we're looking at culture um so this one i wanted to put in here miss pinky fabulous um this year she would have gone down to trinidad pre before the pre-hype of the trinidad carnival but still most noteworthy um first female soca artist to represent grenada on the soca stage and she would have traveled to trinidad in 2023 to participate in some of the activities there of course with a hit singer that's still going um, even in this current year, 2023, take on and stay quiet, right? So another female of notable mention to make here, um, Pinky Fabulous, um, full name Pinky, Pinky Francis of Belmont St. George's, right? And last, as we wrap up this segment on female first and looking at some of the first uh, in females in different aspects uh, in culture, there has been and still remains one female who has captured the road match title. And that was way back, uh, Miney, um, with her hit 10,000 Masqueraders right she would have won the um female the road match title uh in 2000 and uh, i don't want to say the wrong year um but in any 2000s more than 10 years now since that 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 winning of that title and uh she still remains the only female to capture the road match title uh so still looking forward to have more women in the in the cultural space the soca space the 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 calypso space um and dominate um, there has been many examples of women, but in terms of winning titles, we're still looking for some more. So that's it as we wrap up some first in terms of women and looking at first women. Again, this was a, a commemoration of the International Women's Day, March 8th. Um, that we just celebrated last Wednesday um, to talk about women in terms of first female in their respective areas. On our Facebook page, we provided some several other examples in terms of sports. We have Afi Fletcher, who is a uh, first female in terms of cricket. So we have Afi Fletcher. Um, we also have. Um, 
in non-traditional sports we have um table tennis we have rosemary diner um she has been a leading role in table tennis um training as well as playing herself so these are some examples of, of women and female first in their field so as i said there's a lot of examples of female first and we hope to grow our content in that area with time so let's take a, a quick break and then we'll be back to and um, um, move into some March 13th um, information. But let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> 